Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon us. We invite your Holy Spirit to teach us. Lord, we ask for your grace. We ask that you would prepare our hearts, our minds. Give us understanding of your word. Give us ears to hear what you're saying through your word. We ask that you change us. We pray your blessing on this time as we study your word, as we look to you in faith. We pray these things and give thanks in your holy name, the name Jesus. Amen. We're still studying how God uses the storms of life. We come to the third reason. The first one, we looked at Noah, and we saw that God uses storms to protect us. In our second study, we looked at Jonah, and we looked at the fact that God uses storms sometimes to correct us. And in this study today, we're going to look at the disciples, and we're going to see that God uses storms not just to protect us, not just to correct us, but oftentimes to perfect us. Now, what we're going to look at is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We're going to read Mark's account, but it's found, if you're taking notes, in Matthew chapter 8, Mark chapter 4, and Luke chapter 8. And so, turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to uh, Mark chapter 4. In this storm, we're going to look at three main things. First, we're going to see the sea rages. Then we're going to see the sailors react. And then we're going to see the Savior's rebuke. And so we're going to pick up our study here in verse 35 of Mark chapter 4. It says, And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, the disciples, Let us pass over unto the other side. Now that's very important. Jesus is saying to his disciples, Let us pass over unto the other side. And it says in verse 36, When they had sent away the multitude, now, if you want a reference point to that, uh, verse 1 of chapter 4 says, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship, and he sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land, and he taught them. So Jesus sat in a ship, and he taught from the ship while the people were there on the shore. And now Jesus is saying to the disciples, let's go to the other side. He's given them direction. He's told them what's going to happen, what's, uh, where they're going to go. And he sends the multitude away in verse 36. And it says, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And it says in verse 37, we find ourselves again in the midst of a storm. Now Luke's account says, as they sailed, here in Mark it says, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Matthew says that the ship was covered. Luke says that they were in jeopardy. This was a serious storm that has come up upon them. Out of nowhere, unexpected. And look at verse 38. And he, speaking of Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. I love the Lord. It's just uh, amazing to, to read this passage of Scripture to me. Because many of these men on this ship were experienced fishermen. That was their occupation before they began to follow the Lord. 
Jesus, after teaching the multitude, he was tired. This pictures his humanity. We're in a moment going to see his deity fully revealed. But here we see him in his humanity. He's tired. He's exhausted from teaching. And he's asleep on a pillow in the ship. And now this storm comes out of nowhere. The disciples are with the Lord. They're doing the will of the Lord. It was the, the Lord who said, let's go to the other side. They're, they're doing everything they know how to do. And yet, unexpectedly, this storm comes. You may have found yourself in the same type of situation. You think at all. At all costs, you're doing what the Lord wants you to do. You're not aware of anything that you're not doing. You're, you're not aware of any sin or any problem. The Lord's told you what to do, and you're in the process of doing it, and now you're in the midst of a storm. Because the Lord not only uses storms to protect us, He not only uses storms to uh, correct us, He uses storms to perfect us. The disciples aren't sinning. There's, they're not like Jonah. They're not going in the opposite direction. They're doing exactly what the Lord told them to do. And yet they find themselves in jeopardy, being covered. The ship now is, is almost full with the waves. And now that we've seen the sea rage, we now see the sailors react. It says, and they awake him, they woke him up, and they say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I'm sure they're perplexed. Why? Why this trouble? Why this storm? We're, we're doing all that we're supposed to do. We're, we're obeying what you tell us to do. And it seems now we're in this trouble, this trial, this storm, and you don't even care. You're asleep. Maybe you have felt that way, that the Lord was just absent in some respect. They say, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Matthew, they say, save us, we perish. Luke, I mean, in, in Luke's gospel, he says, Master, Master, we perish. And so they're crying out in desperation. And so now, in the the next two verses, we see the Savior's rebuke. The sea rages, the sailors react, and now the Savior's rebuke. There's two rebukes here, one in verse 39 and one in verse 40. It says, He arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And there was, the wind ceased and there was a great Calm. The Lord being awoke from his sleep, he stands up, he rebukes the wind, and he says to the sea, Peace be still. still. And the wind ceases, and there was a great calm. But the Lord is not finished rebuking. After rebuking the sea and the wind, he turns to the disciples and he says unto them, verse 40, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? In Matthew's account, he says, O oh, ye of little faith. In Luke's gospel, he asks, Where is your faith? You see, the Lord has allowed this storm. When Jesus said, let us go to the other side, he knew that the storm was coming. And now their faith is being tested because God often uses storms to perfect us. He wants to, to develop our faith. He wants us to grow in our faith. And so he asks, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I want to read two other passages of Scripture, and then I want to come back to verse 41 as we close out our study. Uh, turn with me to James chapter 1. I want to read a passage of Scripture there. Verses 2, 3, and 4. James says, My brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, 
Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, notice that, the trying of your faith, faith is present. The disciples had faith, but they weren't exercising it. They weren't uh, walking in that faith, living in that faith. Jesus says, where is it? Oh, you have little faith. Why are you fearful? But the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be, notice this verse 4 of James 1, that ye may be perfect. God uses storms to perfect us. The Lord is, is speaking, rebuking them concerning their faith. He wants their faith to grow and be established. It says that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now just a few pages in 1 Peter chapter 1. I want to read verses 3 through 9. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith, kept by the power of God through faith, unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, there it is again. James mentions it, Peter mentions it, that the trial of your faith, the Lord uses storms to perfect us. The trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, who, having not seen ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So back in Mark's Gospel as we close up our study. Jesus tells the disciples, let's go to the other side. He's just been teaching the multitude, and we see the seas rage. This wind comes up, this storm comes up out of nowhere unexpectedly. The disciples are terrified, they're afraid. Jesus is asleep in the ship, and they awake him, they react. The sailors react by, by waking Jesus and saying, don't you care that we perish? Jesus rebukes. The Savior rebukes the wind and the sea, and then he rebukes the disciples. And I want you to notice verse 41. It says, And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The disciples have went from fear to faith. Their focus has shifted from the storm to the Savior. They're no longer contemplating the jeopardy that they were in. They're no longer discussing the wind and the height of the waves and how the ship almost sank. They're no longer discussing they, they almost perished. Now they're discussing and contemplating the Lord. What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the seas obey Him. Jesus allowed this storm to perfect the disciples. It was in this storm they were able to see Him in a way that they hadn't seen Him before. And their faith was challenged and their focus was shifted. And so we see how God uses the storms of life. He uses them like with Noah to protect us. He uses them like with Jonah to correct us. He also uses them in the case of the disciples, this study, to perfect us. So if you're in a storm today, God is using that storm. And we know He's using it for a good reason, because Romans 8, 28, we mentioned this in our first study, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, who are the called according to His purpose. So God is, is either protecting you, correcting you, or perfecting you. And next week, we'll look at the last reason that God uses the storms of life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your love. 
We thank you, Lord, that even when we find ourselves in the midst of the storm, we can rest assured in that fearful place that you are working it together for our good in some way, shape, form, or fashion. We ask that you would help us in faith to look to you. Let our attention, our focus be shifted from the storm to the Savior. Lord, we do ask that you would perfect us in our faith, even if that means we go through a storm. We just ask and pray that with every storm we encounter, that our eyes would be opened to a new revelation of who you are, and that our faith would be perfected. We ask, we pray in Jesus' name and give thanks. Amen.